Welcome to Cybersecurity in Context. My name is Chris Hufnagel, and I will be your instructor this semester. I wanted to begin with this provocative and enigmatic photograph of East German women parading around computers before the, Berlin, the fall of the Berlin Wall. What is this photograph about? I would argue that it's a display of national power. We've reached an age where nations compete not just on having the most minerals and natural resources, but they compete on information, access to that information, and the ability to make sense of the world through competing, computing. So what this photograph is about to me is a display of national power. In this course, we are going to talk about cybersecurity and context through the lens of many different disciplines to understand this power. And over, the over this course, what you are going to learn is that the future of our country, the future of our individual security is in your hands. How well you are able to understand this technology, but also in how well you can understand the context of cybersecurity. This course is going to be about the high-level wrapping elements of cybersecurity, some of which I want to share with you now. One of the important wrapping elements in cybersecurity is the American dominance in computing and telecommunications. This map shows how internet communications are routed around the world, and you'll notice this enormous red band that goes through the United States. Well, this gives us tremendous cybersecurity power. It gives us the ability to, in essence, see how other people are using the internet and other internet-connected technologies, such as even voice uh, telephonic lines. This map is one of the reasons why the BRICS nations, Russia, South Africa, China, and the like, are trying to build their own internal internets. It's because of our dominance. Other aspects of context that we need to know about is how we are vulnerable. Um, one of the things we'll talk about is how the Department of Defense was able to demonstrate that by putting a diesel generator online, it could be attacked within moments and destroyed remotely by hackers. So on one hand, we have this tremendous cyber ability, but on the other hand, we have this tremendous cyber vulnerability. Another cybersecurity issue that we'll talk about is the problem of radicalization. Radicalization can now happen completely online. Many of the problems we're having with terrorist attacks now come from Americans who never left the country. They never traveled somewhere else to go train in some camp. Rather, their training came through internet technologies. As cybersecurity professionals, what will our role be in dealing with this type of radicalization? The private sector is also a major part of cybersecurity nowadays. Not only is most of cyber owned by the private sector, in the sense that most of the infrastructure we work on online is owned by companies like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, the private sector is also a major actor in fighting cyber attacks and even in engaging in offensive cyber operations. So one of the things we learned in 2016 and 2017 is that Microsoft has used its technical prowess and its legal powers to pursue Russian hackers who allegedly uh, broke into systems in the US to um, affect our election. We'll also talk about identity theft. Identity theft is one of the major reasons why we have cybersecurity problems. I'll show funny examples, such as um, this prankster who got a, um, a, a credit application, tore it up, reassembled it, sent it in, taped together, all haphazardly, and nonetheless got a credit card. We'll see that incidents like this explain a lot of problems in cybersecurity, deep, economic and political problems that are very difficult to deal with, problems that you're going to have to manage in your career. We'll also talk about 
how the military understands cybersecurity. We'll see um, a fair amount about U.S. Cyber Command, which in 2017 was elevated by President Trump so that it has more power. We'll talk about the context of what that means. We'll even look at how the military is dealing with cybersecurity threats, such as falling back upon analog technologies in case digital ones are attacked. This way, we can rely on these unconnected um, or disconnected systems in order to maintain security. Another principal issue will be how we think about cybersecurity, that is, how we define it. We see this in the military as well. Um, there are some who want to spread uh, um, responsibility for cyber across all the different domains of war, whether it's land, sea, air, and space. And indeed, we'll learn that all the branches of the armed forces have their own cybersecurity teams. But we'll also think about alternative ways of thinking about cybersecurity. For instance, should cyber be a domain of its own? occupying um, attacks and defense in the electromagnetic, electromagnetic spectrum. That's another way of thinking about these problems. We'll talk about how regulation is affecting cybersecurity. One of the most important aspects is what's known as the NIST cybersecurity framework. Uh, appears here on the slide. Chances are in your career you'll spend a lot of time with the NIST framework. We'll talk about its contours, its advantages and disadvantages. We'll also talk about how ways in which security, attempts to increase security, can undermine um, other aspects of security. Uh, one of the greatest, greatest examples is the Athens Affair, whereby um, law enforcement demands to have a form of kind of wiretapping ability built into telecommunications network became a vulnerability such that organized crime and governments could break into these law enforcement tools and use them to spy on ordinary people. We'll talk about the Internet of Things. Really exciting uh, developments are occurring in this space. Everything from sophisticated cars and how they're connected to the Internet, how cars with OnStar, for instance, can be remotely disabled uh, by the OnStar service, all the way down to the Internet of Things of the, the, the very ex inexpensive devices that you might put in your home to uh, enable basic automation. The Internet of Things is a profound development for cybersecurity, and it very well could make the ordinary citizen, people like you and me, victors or victims of um, cybersecurity. We'll talk about data breaches. In fact, some courses on cybersecurity spend the entire time talking only about security breaches. There are a fantastic number of security breaches now. We'll talk about the law, the dynamics, and the economics of this problem. We'll talk about what's known as cross-domain deterrence. For instance, here in the US, we have started indicting foreign hackers for breaking into American systems. Why? How could the American justice system reach these uh, Chinese, these alleged Chinese hackers? We'll talk about how international diplomacy, how Interpol, and how other mechanisms very well might someday snare these individuals and bring them to justice for the crimes they uh, have alleged to have been committed. We'll talk about the role of nations. In this slide, um, this is the famous image of Sealand, the Principality of Sealand. This was an experiment in the 1990s of internet libertarians who thought in order to have a truly free internet, we need to build um, infrastructure that is not affected by any nation state. So they actually built computing resources on this former World War II platform in the North Sea. We'll talk about what sea land means and how nation states are reasserting themselves on the internet because of the internet's power to erode um, um, the influence and control of nation states. We'll also talk about why firms systematically underinvest in security. This is going to be a very big problem in your career. 
we'll talk uh, about how you might convince people within your organization to take cybersecurity more seriously and spend the money that's necessary for it to be properly funded. We'll also talk about behavioral economics and psychology. Um, one of the big problems in cybersecurity is users. Users seem almost to be the enemy of security. We'll talk about the psychological reasons why people take shortcuts, why they click on those phishing email links, in hopes that we can design systems and design policy so that users are better served. We'll also talk about how interconnected we are, how a single fake tweet coming out of the Associated Press's uh, feed could cause the stock market to crash. We're so interconnected now that cybersecurity is becoming among the most important issues online. And it's not just about making sure our reputations are secure. It's also about making sure our markets and our institutions work. We'll also talk about the coming kinds of attacks that we're likely to see in the cybersecurity field. One of the most important ones is the issue of integrity. This is a series of images that are synthetic. They're fake. It's a fake speech uh, that appears to be coming out of former President Obama's mouth. Cybersecurity professionals are going to have to think about how to deal with this type of problem when the very integrity of what we think is true, what we observe, is attacked. I want to spend a fair amount of time in this course talking about what it means to be a cybersecurity professional. How do we elevate cybersecurity so that it is a profession that is taken as seriously as people in the medical field or the legal field? In this course, I expect you to engage in discussions. I want you to think about your assumptions, to think about your arguments, to think about counter-arguments. A lot of what this course is going to be about is the quality of your engagement and the quality of your thought uh, when we meet together in live sessions. It's important to understand that cybersecurity is a technical discipline. But for you to, be, for you to succeed, you're going to have to have a lot of human skills. And much of, that, of this course is about those human skills, those human dynamics. Um, that will affect cybersecurity. Um, because participation is so important, a major part of your grade will be class per, uh, participation. Another major fact, uh, 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 factor will be how you perform on short reflection pieces. And we'll also have you do a final project that's relevant to themes in the course. If you ever find yourself stuck in this course, I want you to think about the different roles that you might play and how different people might approach cybersecurity differently and have vastly different attitudes about what should happen in the cybersecurity field. If at any point you have an idea and you can't see another person's perspective or you feel like maybe your perspective is somewhat constrained, you might run through this list and say, how would the people in the marketing department feel about my proposal to secure our systems? Or how might regulators uh, 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 feel about my approach? There's a, dozens of different viewpoints you can take up in order to enrich cybersecurity and understand its nuanced contexts. It's also important to know that we are going to be using several disciplinary lens, lenses in this course. I am trained as a lawyer. So my lens is very heavily towards the law, and that will become pretty clear. But I'm going to fight against it, and I want you to fight against it as well. We're going to think about cybersecurity through the lens of political science. We'll talk about strategic goals of different actors. We'll talk about deterrence theory. We'll talk about how nation states think about cybersecurity. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about the economic factors that lead to insecurity. We'll talk about incentives, the misalignment of these incentives, and the types of uh, ways we might use psychology to uh, make the world more secure. Finally, we're going to talk a lot about history. How did 
we land in our current cybersecurity posture. You know, the internet didn't spring fully formed out of the head of Zeus. It was a um, project that emerged from the military. Um, it, it, it was built for resilience. It was not built for security. Um, a lot of its contours are based on the people who provided it. So for instance, the internet had to be provided over the telephone lines. We'll see that basic technical constraints, these historical constraints, have vested us with a fair number of cybersecurity problems. If the internet were to be redesigned today, we would be able to recognize some of these accidents and we would design in far more security than we currently have. I'll just say a little bit about myself. I've st I started teaching at Berkeley back in 2006. I've taught a lot of different courses. I come to cybersecurity through the lens of computer crime law and through consumer law, but we'll see that there's many other lenses that we can take in looking at cybersecurity issues. I'm an expert in consumer protection and privacy law, and we'll, we'll um, integrate some of those ideas through the course. I'm also a practitioner. For years, I worked in Washington, D.C. on legislation surrounding information privacy and security. I am a consultant to a law firm called Gunderson Detmer. All my clients are in the emerging technology space. That is, my clients are only startups, uh, which is a very interesting uh, way uh, to do law. I'm also an advisor to a number of cybersecurity firms. Um, I spend most time with a company called Palantir uh, that works on integration of information in the cybersecurity uh, field. I've written many legal briefs, so I've done a bit of legislation, a fair amount of litigation, and what I'm gonna do in every session is try to speak with you about how you can best interact with your lawyers, how you can understand what makes them tick, and how you can keep their bills down so they don't bankrupt you in your practice. Finally, it's really important to me that you succeed, not just in this course, but in your career. Uh, take a moment today to friend me on LinkedIn. I wanna help you, I wanna support you throughout your career. Uh, when it becomes the right time, let's talk about what you'd like to do and keep in touch. You know, years from now, I want to hear from you when you take that new job. I want you to send me an email and tell me what you're doing uh, because ultimately I'm, I care about your career and I, I want to um, expand the field of cybersecurity professionals.